What is cyclothymia and how is it different from bipolar disorder? That's what I'm talking about today. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and this channel is about mental health education and self-improvement. You don't want to miss a video, so click subscribe and the notification bell. Today's topic is based on a viewer question, and I got two requests to talk about this from Knitting Pasta and Jenna. Jenna went on to ask, Will you be doing a video at some point discussing cyclothymia it's with its somewhat more rapid mood cycling? Thanks, Knitting Pasta and Jenna. The best way to think about cyclothymia is to think of it as bipolar 2 disorder, but not quite. With bipolar 2 disorder, you have episodes of hypomania and episodes of depression. With cyclothymia, you have symptoms of hypomania, but not enough to be considered a hypomanic episode. And you also have symptoms of depression, but not enough to be considered a full depressive episode. So it's like you have subthreshold hypomania and subthreshold depression. Let me remind you of what hypomania is. Hypomania is a period of abnormally elevated or irritable mood and increased activity or energy. You have a combination of elevated mood state and an elevated activity level. And this has to last at least four days and you must have three or more of the following symptoms. And you need four though if your mood is irritable and not elevated. Inflated self-esteem or grandiosity a decreased need for sleep, such as feeling rested after only three hours of sleep, being more talkative than usual or pressure to keep talking, racing thoughts, distractibility, increase in agitation or goal-directed activity, excessive involvement in activities that have a high potential for painful consequences, like buying sprees or foolish business investments. And this can include hypersexuality. With bipolar 2 disorder, you would have three or four of these symptoms happening at the same time. But with cyclothymic disorder, when your mood is on the elevated end of the spectrum, you may only have one or two of these symptoms. There are nine symptoms of depression, and to be considered to be in a depressive episode, you need to have five of the nine. And here are the nine symptoms depressed mood, lasting most of the day, very little interest in pleasurable activities, weight changes, sleep changes, being physically slowed or agitated, fatigue or energy loss, feeling worthless or guilty, problems with thinking or concentration, recurrent thoughts of death or feeling suicidal. With psychothymic disorder, you would only need to have four or less of these. Jenna mentioned in her question the issue of cyclothymia cycling more rapidly than bipolar disorder. With bipolar disorder, your episodes can be separated by weeks, months, or even years. I had one patient who had a manic episode every seven years. And so, as it happens, I haven't seen her for several years since her mania resolved. But that's unusual. I think the more typical course is that people will have one to two episodes a year. Rapid cycling bipolar disorder occurs when you have more than four episodes in a year. For more information though on rapid cycling bipolar, you can watch a video that I did and I'll link um, to that in the corner as well as in the description. So back to Jenna's point, part of the criteria for cyclothymic disorder is that a person will go back and forth between uh, symptoms of hypomania and symptoms of depression and will not go more than two months without any symptoms. So this, this means that most of the time you're having symptoms. So in this way, the mood shifts are cycling faster than they do with regular bipolar disorder and, and probably even faster than a person who has bipolar disorder with rapid cycling. There are people who have ultra rapid cycling bipolar disorder and their mood states can switch within a month but that's also not the usual case either. When does it start? Cyclothymic disorder usually starts in adolescence or early adulthood. It can be seen in children, and the mean age of onset in the child version of it would be around age six. Will this turn into bipolar disorder? 
Not necessarily, but it is estimated that 15 to 50% of people with cyclothymic disorder can go on to develop bipolar disorder, either bipolar 1 or bipolar 2. So this just means that the symptoms that you have become greater and more intense such that it becomes a more full-fledged bipolar disorder. Some researchers consider cyclothymic disorder as more of a temperament problem or a disorder of development. So you may see articles on the internet that call it cyclothymic disposition. This would be another way, essentially, of saying a moody person. And the reason for calling it this is because the symptoms aren't to the severity that they cause the same kind of problems that you would have with bipolar disorder. Even with bipolar 2 disorder, hypomania can go unnoticed if it's not destructive. But with cyclothymia, if you only have one symptom of hypomania, such as distractibility, that could easily be written off as being too busy and, and having too many things to do. Or you could easily think that you're racing thoughts or because you're anxious. It's a similar issue with the depressive symptoms. You'll have some symptoms of depression, but you won't be all the way depressed. If your symptoms still cause enough distress for you though, the best treatment approach would be cognitive behavior therapy. We usually don't treat cyclothymia with medication because often the symptoms just aren't severe enough. And that's a good thing because you, don't, you always wanna weigh the risks and the benefits of medications. Medications can come with side effects and it may not be worth it to you to subject yourself to side effects if you can overcome your symptoms with therapy. I hope this helps you understand cyclothymic disorder and how it's different from bipolar disorder. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this kind of information and leave me your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.